Okay, maybe we should continue. I'll just have seven participants that have logged on. Uh, let me wait a few seconds so that we can get um, Okay, ten. We are ten, or maybe we should then just start. Okay. I was explaining something before we had to um, log out. Uh, we are just uh, very, very sorry for that, but we can't help it for now until we have a paid um, subscription. Then we wouldn't um, have to be going through this um, step. I said during a speed echo pulse sequence, we normally apply a 180 degree pulse in between the 90, uh, 90 degree RF pulse and then the time of um, acquisition of a signal, actually the time of a sampling and signal, or the time of a, a snap um, shooting and signal. We are applying a 180 degree pulse. And so why do we do that? We do that because of this. which is a very, very necessary step we do, we take in a, in a spin echo because the spin echo is affected by the magnetic and the homogeneity and then the susceptibility. No matter how uniform our uh, external magnetic field may be, it still has um, some homogeneity, no matter the amount of um, shim coils we must have um, put into the uh, main, uh, um, around the main magnetic um, uh, field, we will still have um, some little um, homogeneity. And also because of um, the different uh, magnetic and susceptibility of uh, um, the, the body we are imaging, even if we are imaging a, a thin slice, all the protons and um, all the materials there all the protons which are present in so many of um, the structures will have a different, slightly different uh, magnetic and susceptibility. So because of that, we are going to introduce um, some kind of um, defacing. In as much as um, the, after the application of the 90 degree pulse, the, the spins will begin to deface, will begin to deface. Initially, they are in place when you apply the 90 degree pulse, but immediately you switch off the 90 degree pulse, the spins, the, they will not begin to deface according to it. But they are deface-in is, um, is according to, um, um, sorry, D2. Yeah, the first thing is according to T2. But in actual fact, it is not uh, mainly because of T2, but because of um, um, the combined effect of um, uh, changes in uh, mag magnetic and susceptibility and um, the field of new homogeneity. So we will now have um, a kind of a faster rate of uh, decay, which we call um, T2, T2 star. Because of this, um, speed echo, the decay of a speed echo is um, um, is influenced by T2 star decay and rather than by um, T2. So we apply this at 180 degree force in order to make the spin echo dependent on T2 instead of T1. Why? Why? How? Because at, uh, let's say at this point, we switch off our 90 degree pulse. We now apply our 180 degree pulse at this point. 
What this one does is that it now make this one grow. It grows until it gets to this same point and then not begin to begin. So this is the point where we apply a where we measure a signal. So it will have a maximum signal at this point, but without a but without a ninety degree, but without a inverting um, MRF pulse. If we don't have this, and we just uh, sample a signal, if you just sample a signal here, TE, this is the signal we are going to get. This is the signal intensity, which will not be as as large as um, this one. So this 180 degree pulse is um, introduced for a purpose, and the purpose is to make a uh, um, T2 decay dependent, I mean, um, of course, uh, to make uh, the spin and code decay dependent on T2, um, T2 effect instead of um, T2 star effect. Uh, let's just um, hold that one there. And, uh, so when we introduce this at what 80 degree um, pulse um, inverting um, sequence, something is going to happen here. We are not going to sample this at without um, doing um, introducing a kind of um, inverting um, um, to cancel this effect of a 180. Because when we introduce 180, we are shifting um, we are shifting the signal through 180 degrees. So we have to apply Hey, let's not forget this one it is also slice and selective it's also slice and selective just as a 90 degrees is um, slice selective this one is also slice and selective so actually apply um um a if a frequency encode and gradient here also. Why this one is there is because this 180 degree, this if this 180 degree, initially I used to think that because of this 180 degree, we have to impact this. We have to invert this, but this is uh, not the case. It's not the case. This 180 degree actually will be taken care of by this um, force half of um, TE, by this um, force half here. So we have um, this um, frequency and code and gradient. So our signal, what this does to our signal is after this 90 degree, our signal goes this way. Um, how do we do it? Um, This one will have a maximum signal. After this, it begins to go down again till it hits um, the zero mark. Without the gradients, we have um, zero signal. Applying the gradients, it begins to go again until it goes to this maximum. So after application of a 90 degree pulse, we have a maximum gradient here, a maximum gradient. But because of the application of this gradient, it is going to gradually come to zero. It's going to come to zero. In as long as this thing is active, it is still going to continue being zero until the time of an echo, the first half of the time of echo is when something would have grown to its maximum value. Remember a curve here. This is um, TE. So this is our TE, the time at which the 
um, the signal with the uh, maximum resistance at the point where we now acquire our signal. Um, but we need to know this that we can actually get the signal at any time. We can decide to acquire a signal at this point, at this point, at this point, or whatever. But it is best to have it at any, exactly at the TE time so that we maximize our signal. So these are the so these are the basic um, a spin echo pulse sequence we have. We need a one ninety degree pulse. We are uh, we apply a ninety degree RM pulse. We select a slice. Immediately we apply that. We of course we apply um, the frequency encode gradient in between um, the ninety degree and the one eighty degree. I'm sorry. We immediately apply it after a ninety degree pulse so that. Um, we that uh, particular portion of the slide will be selected and so on and so forth. We apply a 180. We now have uh, this um, part of uh, we now turn on the gradient uh, um, echo. I mean uh, the gradient um, the gradient coil again when we want to apply when we want to signal. I mean when we want to sample a signal. Then at this point TE is where we now will sample a signal. What I actually have here is just a, a snapshot because as the something is going, it is just at this point that the machine registered some the image, which will now be transformed by uh, the 2D uh, Fourier transform to give us uh, an image. So we can we can have so many modifications to this uh, speed echo uh, sequence. We can have a uh, fast uh, speed echo and so on and so forth. So after this um, cycle, we now wait. We can now wait for some amount of time. We can now wait for an amount of time before we now apply another 90 degree. So the time in between this 90 degree pulse and then the other one is actually a TR. The time between this 90 degree pulse, which we are going to apply during the next iteration and then this initial 90 degree pause is a, a time of a repetition. So let me, I think I know something. So let me share my screen. Hope you can see that you can see the screen. Can we see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can see your screen. Okay, I just look at the this is the time of echo application of um, the RF pulse to when we now sample our signal that is um, the TR. And we are said uh, the time of a repetition is um, the time lapsed between one ninety degree pulse and then the other ninety degree pulse. So this is um, basically for spin echo pulse sequence. You can also have the same explanation for um, for gradient um, gradient um, echo pulse uh, sequence. Okay. So do we have any question for now? Do you have any question before we go into the other type of uh, a pulse sequence, which is a um, gradient, a pulse sequence, I mean gradient and or uh, gradient to recall the echo sequence. Okay.
gradients, pulse, um, pulse cycle, pulse sequence. Sequence, GRE. And before I continue, our machine, at times if we look at, we just finished a spin echo. If you want to know whether, whatever, in fact, if you see any image, you always see the type of modality. You see the T, whether it is the TA time, the TR time. The one we just finished, you can see something like a SE as a spin echo or FSE. So it means the something was based on a fast and spin echo. So you can actually tell whether the, the position was um, um, used or was uh, made using spin echo or um, gradient echo or manipulation, as the case may be. So, I want to explain a gradient to record the um, pulse echo and sequence using this um, same diagram. I didn't fill up this space in the initial one. Of course, something continues for a very long time, continually iterating at different um, uh, frequency levels, at different phases until one fills up uh, the case space. Then one would have been succeeded in acquiring one image. Then one goes on to do some other things. So let me, okay, let me just uh, leave this because um, of course when we want to do a GRE, we also fill up uh, the, the case space, which will represent with um, this and frequency, um, grid, um, um, grid, um, frequency gradient code. Sorry, I'm facing some gradient color. For gradient echo, for GRE, We still have a slide yet. If we remove this 180 degree pulse, what we now have is a gradient and recall them a pulse and sequence. A gradient recall them echoes a pulse and sequence. What is a gradient uh, pulse sequence? And you might want to ask why do we have this 90 degrees there? We can actually use a um, 90 degree for um, GRE, but in most cases, we don't normally use a 90 degree. So let me just remove it. We can actually use 90 degree, but we, don't, we normally use a um, time to denote by alpha, which can be from 5, 10, 15, and so on and so forth, 30 degrees. We use a um, a very, very short a period of um, um, echo time. We have and they have an um, um, explanation for that. There are explanations for that. Without the 180 degree pulse, I mean, without the 180 degree RF pulse, we need to bring in a gradient here. A negative um, gradient here. If you don't do that, we are not going to have um, a maximum. This 180 degree is what actually, is what um, um, introduce. It is this 180 degree that uh, introduces uh, that uh, inversion in a spin echo. But without this 180 degree in a gradient echo, 
that is going to be done with this um, um, gradient, this um, frequency, this uh, readout uh, gradient. So this readout gradient does the function, does the work of uh, this one 80 degrees, so to say, in a way. So we are going to modulate um, that, the frequency, uh, frequency um, gradient coil with um, this um, inversion loop here. So that is why the um, GRE is um, at times uh, normally called the uh, um, gradient I record. You have them um, recall them, um, this um, gradient. Not in um, the speed echo, uh, there wasn't any need to recall uh, this gradient. But uh, in GRE, we need to recall it so that uh, we can have a maximum TE at, the, at this point. So this is actually the basic uh, difference between uh, GRE and then um, SC uh, spin echo. And again, the TR time for, for spin echo, the TR time for spin echo is um, very, very short compared to, I mean, the spin, uh, the, G, uh, the TR time for gradient uh, GRE is uh, very, very short compared to um, a spin echo. Why is this so? Why do we want to do such? There are times when we need to um, image at a very, very fast rate. When we don't need uh, the patient to be in the scanner for a very long time because um, MRI, um, unfortunately, is a procedure that uh, takes time, not like a CT that uh, can be done in uh, a few seconds. MRI actually takes um, time. So this um, sequence was uh, developed to hasten um, the acquisition of um, signal by shortening the, the TR time. It has um, its um, significance. So we need to simply uh, look at that. We need to simply look at, um, how do I do that? Okay. You know, when we turn on for spin echo, um, we need to wait for a 90 degree. We need to apply a 90 degree pulse. When we apply that 90 degree pulse, we are going to apply a 90 degree pulse. The longitudinal magnetization will now begin to build until about uh, 5 MT hours. I'm going to have for about five TRs before it recovers to about um, the full initial um, value. It's a MEC, MEC magnetization. So this takes a very long time. This takes a very long time for spin echo. But for ingredient and echo, we don't want the, um, we don't want that is a recovery to reach the 110%. To reach is a full longitudinal magnetization because it is uh, actually what we it is actually the amount of uh, this which we recover and we are going to use in the subsequent um, iteration. If we don't recover much of this, we are going to have less that uh, we fall into the um, long, I mean um, the transverse and plate. Assuming after the first um, the first state we got uh, ninety percent. At the second stage, we might have um, uh, 90, maybe this gives us 80, and so on and so forth. At this point in time. But we don't want this, we don't want to stay um, at a point we are going to actually have a steady state, which um, I might not want to go into um, in the spin echo. But for brilliant record echo, we don't want to image for um, so much um, time. You just want a little angle. You want to apply the pause for a brief uh, period of time so that um, it covers um, maybe just a small angle. A small angle with like this. If it covers a small angle, it is not going to, a small angle it has um, um, covered, we have um, used maybe 15 degrees, um, 15 degrees. Will give us time 
we make the longitudinal um, magnetization to be recovered in a shorter period of time. What do I mean? I need to change this. We have a 90 degree pulse. If I apply a 90 degree pulse, 90 degree pulse, every is going to knock down uh, the longitudinal magnetization into the transverse plane. So at each after the application of the RF pulse, the longitudinal magnetization will be zero. Will be zero. It will take time to get to its uh, maximum, hundred percent. But if we don't, if you don't knock it all down, uh, this uh, longitudinal magnetization. If you don't knock it all down to ninety degrees, assuming we knock it down to around them um, thirty degrees. So we knock it down by about uh, thirty degrees. It is going to take lesser time to grow back to its maximum value. It's going to take lesser time to grow back to its uh, maximum value. So this is uh, why, and if we apply here uh, 15 degrees and so on, and the same thing is going to happen. It's going to take much lesser time to grow back to its uh, maximum value. Um, so these are just um, angle um, lines. It can be 15, 30, 45, 50, and so on and so forth. All I'm saying is during the spin echo, we need to knock on um, the we need to apply a 90 degree um, RF pulse. But for gradient term echo, we don't do that because the, the essence of a gradient echo is um, for uh, fast term imaging. And for fast term imaging, one of the things we want to do is that uh, we have a, we, we have a short term TR. And one of the ways we do that, in getting a short TR is by using a smaller a flip angle. But okay, this is the flip angle I was talking about. Let's say you have a 30 degrees flip angle. This 30 degree flip angle will take a lesser time to return to um, the maximum longitudinal um, um, stop when the um, RF force has been switched off. So because of that, we now have uh, the maximum of um, the uh, this uh, longitudinal magnetization available to be used to be knocked down along uh, this um, uh, transverse um, uh, plane. So this is um, the, um, the development that now took care of um, the long time of um, a spin echo. This one has um, some demerits. It has some uh, demerits. The demerits, the, the image you acquire with a gradient uh, record echo is not um, very perfect because we don't use a, we don't use the 180 refocusing um, pulse. But rather, we use the um, the inverting um, frequency gradient, so it suffers from non-uniform um, field and um, inhomogeneous um, uh, field and the uh, magnetic uh, susceptibility of um, of the atoms of the of the spins in the body. So this is a very very good. Uh, for example, one wants to image and the heart within or the lungs, the patient can be told to uh, hold um, his breath. And um, less than a few seconds, maybe within two seconds, if something is done. But that can never be done with um, GRE, I mean, uh, with an uh, SC, a spin echo. So this is very, very useful when we want to offer, when we want to acquire images at a very, very fast rate. Of course, um, which is going to suffer from some um, small SNR. You have to make do with that. But we have so many methods that will actually help and increase um, 
SNR, the signal to noise and ratio, even while they're using the gradient that we call the um, echo sequence. Now, in about five minutes' time, um, I'll end this meeting and then start again almost immediately. So we can then uh, hold on to our questions for now until I um, I want to end this meeting for now. Just bear with us. After ending it, you can just log in again in a uh, new time.